David Cassidy was a teen idol of his time who skyrocketed from a television show called The Partridge Family to international stardom. In fact, at one time, his fan club base surpassed Elvis, and his posters adorned the walls of millions of teenage girls. We became close friends and traveled to Europe together during one of his many sold-out tours. Later, we would spend some weeks in Hawaii working on a biography. He was my neighbor in Laurel Canyon in Los Angeles. David Cassidy was one of those people whose fame may have obscured public perception of his skills as a songwriter. He loved women and horses. I interviewed him on radio and television and briefly represented him. Everybody knows the the obvious about you. Uh, Teenage Heaven, about 40 million records. Teenage Don't, or else we'll have to pay royalties. All right. 40 million records, the largest fan club, uh, including (coughs) Elvis Presley, more fan club members. Your concerts all over America and the world have sold out. You've got 900 million trillion dollars. You became, you know, the kid and all of that stuff. Plus, I'm a good little dancer. Yes, you know how to shake it. Now that a lot of that stuff, the teen heaven trip, is behind you, Uh, how do you look back upon it? How do you view it? How do you think of it now that it's... I don't want to say it's it's gone, because you're going to be on to your next trip, but that part of your life, I think, is over. Yeah, it's pretty well over, and um, I view it as a, a blessing, really, you know. It was all fun, and I look at it as a wonderful experience, and certainly one that allowed me to grow in a lot of ways, but on the same hand, kind of uh, hampered me in growing uh, emotionally, I think, you know. How how did it hamper you? Well, when anything that you do that occupies 16, 17, 18 hours a day uh, of your time, I think, uh, does, you know, inhibit you and does uh, not allow you to grow. I don't think I made any new friends in the last four years. You know, I think that um, I have led the kind of lifestyle that where I I stay in most of the time. I don't go out. I don't go partying and booging. I don't think I would have anyway. But nonetheless, it still is a fact. And I I think that I am I'm very skeptical about people. You know, I think that because of it all, I think I had to protect myself so much Mm. that I didn't allow perhaps a number of people who had good intentions. I don't think I let them in, you know, when, uh, and I look back at a couple of experiences now, and I wish I had those moments again. I wish that I had those people again. Would you have traded it for those experiences? Would you have given up the, the, the whole trip? Oh, no, obviously I, I did it because it, you know, I, I wanted to do it. It was something that was of the moment, and I, uh, I just flowed with it. I allowed it to take me wherever it would take me, and uh, it was a it was a wonderful experience. I I just said I wished that I wish that everyone and anyone could have experienced just a moment of it, just a moment of that yeah. peak experience. You know, it really was the really pe- was fantastic. The peak view is Madison Square Garden. Wasn't one of it? the peaks. There were so many of them. You know, that was one of them. Every time I would walk out on stage was a a high, a good yeah. high. Yeah. Any performer who walks out to have, you know, anywhere from 100 to 100,000 people, whatever your trip is, and to have them all there loving you and letting you know it, it's a wonderful experience. I mean, I, I look back on it as just good times, and hopefully I will be able to um, to grow in other ways, you know. And lonely times? And lonely times, sure. The perfect example was coming from the the concert you mentioned, the Madison Square Garden concert, where I, it was, you know, 20,000 people of just, it was, you experienced it, hysteria, where it was such a high and such Mm. intensity to go from that thrown into the back of a truck Mm. on out. And I think they let me off in Queens somewhere, (laughs) really, in a, 
in a dive that was probably six bucks a night. And I, um, I remember just getting into this place and the w wallpaper was peeling off the walls and the carpets, it smelled, it reeked, it was musty. And Bukowski's place. It was, uh, yeah. it, exactly, here we are, yeah. you know, and uh, <laughs> it, it was so unusual, I, I, you know, I can't, it was so bizarre leaning back into the tub, sliding in with the, with the steam going and just yeah. reflecting on 10 minutes ago, you know, 15 minutes ago. You know, it was part of the experience as making the books and as becoming very paranoid and as, you know, getting high and all of that was, it was part of the experience. So I, I accepted it as that and I think now I'm sort of shedding a lot of my shell mm. that I created for myself and I, I think I'm getting in touch a lot more now with people than I was, which is a good, good thing for me, you know. How much does it trouble you that that people think of you, uh, you know, as a thermos bottle and the lunch boxes and the mm. Rice Krispies and all that. Is it still something that occupies your mind or do you say to yourself, well, if they think of me that way, that's their trip? And, uh, or it, does that, it bother you? That's the only way. It used to bother me. I mean, it used, I used to eat my guts out about it. I mean, I used to think, you know, this wasn't the way it was meant to be. This wasn't what I had wanted. This wasn't what I had intended to happen. What was it? What was it you wanted when it all Well, I mean, when it all happened, I was working in a textile industry, right? Making thirty-eight eighty a week. <laughs> you understand? When it all started to come down. But that's not what down. you wanted. I mean, you wanted something. No, no, of course not. What I originally wanted, and as all people go along through their life, we create new goals and hopefully we, we try to reach them. I reached mine, you know. At the age of 20, I was a working actor. 19, I was a working actor. Yeah. I was doing the kind of things I wanted to do. I got a couple of good dramatic roles. I wanted to be a dramatic actor. I wanted. To, I just wanted to work, you know, and do that. And I wanted to sing, but, you know, I had, uh, you know, dreams of making a record. I mean, you know, we're just... I didn't even think about it as a business or as as anything to do with being, you know, a vocation or an occupation, I thought, you know, it would have been a nice thing to do. But I, I was always into sitting around my living room and playing my guitar, and I still am. Uh, do you consider yourself now a, a relatively uh, happy person, relatively secure? It, you know, it varies from week to week. I wouldn't go so far as to say I'm an unhappy man right now because I'm in good company. There is speculation that those four years really took its toll upon you mentally and physically. That sure it did. You went through all kinds of changes and... Hasn't these... Haven't these past four years taken a big toll on you? Not to the degree that it has on you. Well, okay. Uh, then again, you only put in... What is it, two hours a night here? <laughs> yes. You get paid all that money <laughs> no, for come these. On, come on, I'm sorry. Yeah. I think that what it gets down to, it, personally, is is that people have a, obviously a preconception of who I am yeah. and the, they within the, their own trip are hung up with their own image of themselves yep. which in as much as saying like well I'm whoever I am and in order to be whoever I am I'm going to wear this kind of an outfit yep. and I'm going to wear my hair like this and I'm going to like this kind of music and I'm going to talk this kind of talk and anything outside of that little niche is a threat to them and consequently I think in many instances uh, I think I'm a threat to them so I don't lay it on them you know I, I think that I think that it's all it's very natural and it, I hopefully if someday or another it'll it'll happen you know I think that if it's really there for me if it's really there for me I think that you know I can put a put a record on and have them turn it over and if they like it, then that's okay, you know? I mean, I think that I used to be very frustrated about it, you know? I used to be very frustrated that there was so much musical prejudice that people listen to only one kind of music mm -hmm. and open themselves up to only one kind of... I don't, you know, and it's... I, you know, I could, I could go on for hours and hours about it. I'd probably get myself really frustrated if I did. But I don't have anything ill or evil to say to them. It's just, you know to anyone and any, anybody, you know, just keep yourself open to whatever comes your way and yeah. don't hang yourself up with little images that you want to hang on folks and music and, and if artists some, and whatever else. <clears throat>